this is the business end of our off-grid solar system. We've got this installed with some batteries and inverters so we can run various parts of the house off-grid. You can also see we've got solar water heating further up the roof. You'll notice there's one small panel towards the left-hand end of this array that runs a little 12-volt system that's on its own. And then these three larger panels, 250 watts each, have replaced a whole string of smaller panels which used to be there. So the first step was to remove the old panels and that was done easily enough from a ladder. After that we put up scaffolding so that we had a good platform to work from to put the big panels up. First thing we did was take out the old tiles round the brackets and grind some bigger slots out of them so they fitted more neatly than the original installation. We put them back in place with some uh, felt as well to help the waterproofing and at the same time we moved the top rail up a bit to accommodate the bigger panels and extended both rails sideways. Since the first installation I'd learned a bit more about how to install these properly and found a, a better way of getting in the little connectors that the uh, clamps screw onto. You hold them against the rail just like this, slide them up a little bit and slowly rotate them into the rail and then they're ready to go whereas the first time we were sliding them in for the end and we now know there's no need for that. Because these panels were much bigger we had to find a way to keep them in place while we were moving the scaffolding so we just used a piece of wood that was the same thickness as the panels themselves and then the mid clamps could grip the wood and hold the panels securely in place while we got ready to get the next one installed. The panels came with some leads already on them so we used MC4 connectors to uh, connect these two leads that ran through to the original junction box which was left from the solar installation that we've actually removed. From this junction box the wires run round the side of the house and go through the wall through an air vent like this. Because batteries produce hydrogen when they're being charged, you don't keep them in the house, so we've got them in a separate building. You can see we've got two here wired in parallel, and the positive lead feeds into one battery and the negative lead into the other, and we've got two equal length loops connected to two batteries together. That ensures that both batteries get an equal level of charge and use, and you don't end up with one getting used in favour of the other. Also in here we've got the fuse. Inside the box here you can see there's a 250 amp fuse there, which is plenty for the things we're running off the system. This white cable here is the battery sense that lets the controller indoors know that the actual voltage is on the battery terminals because the voltage detected at the end of the big power cables will be different because the voltage will drop along the length of them. And finally this grey lead goes to a temperature sensor which is bolted onto the positive terminal of the battery and wrapped up in this bubble wrap here and that's so the controller can adjust the voltages that it's charging to based on the temperature of the battery. So indoors now you can see the vent that the wires are coming in through there from the both the batteries and the solar panels themselves. We've got the isolators here, top one for the battery, bottom one for the solar panels. Here's the controller itself, that's a Morningstar TriStar MPPT and I've made a separate video that you can watch about how that was installed. I've got a small inverter here and that's just running a few um, electrical loads, things like the solar water pump and internet and so on and so that's on pretty much all the time. And then we've got a big inverter here that's a Mastervolt mass sign 2000 watt and that runs the heavier duty loads like a fridge, freezer, washing machine. I'll make a separate video about this soon and uh, show how that can be set up to use different power saving modes. One of the neat features of the uh, Morningstar controller is that it's got an ethernet port on it so it's plugged into our home network. On the computer I can load this web page which shows the current state of the system. The uh, washing machine is running off it right now and you can actually see Every few seconds as it updates we see a different amount of power coming out of the system as the uh, machine is drawing more. I'm going to do a separate video about how you set up this, this live view and how you can do data logging because um, there's some very advanced features in this controller. 
it's even possible to set this up so you can view the same information on a smartphone. In my case it's only on the network within the house, but it's still very useful to be able to just at a glance see how the system's doing without having to turn the computer on. Again, I'll cover this when I uh, make a separate video about how to use the, uh, the networking features of the controller. See now this is the washing machine running off the off-grid solar system. Drawing about 300 watts at the moment. So that will all be coming from the solar panels. Earlier when it was heating it was drawing 1500 watts. So that would be about 600, 700 from the panels and the remainder from the battery. There you go, system in action.